Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, I've had a few requests uh, based on some other videos that I've done uh, to discuss and talk about um, post-workout nutrition. So I thought I'd do a, a quick uh, video to uh, explain my thoughts on post-workout nutrition uh, and uh, hopefully this will be uh, of interest to those people that have requested it. Um, the way I see post-workout nutrition, there are four real areas uh, that need addressing. Um, you need to make sure you're rehydrated, uh, you need to supply adequate protein, you need to supply adequate carbohydrate, and you also need to supply uh, glutamine. Now, um, if we deal with uh, rehydration first, uh, the amount of rehydration you'd need uh, after your workout uh, will really, uh, or, or, or maybe a competition, uh, will really depend on how much you drink during uh, that competition or training. If you manage to, uh, for example, uh, sip a drink uh, uh, throughout your training or throughout the competition, uh, you may actually be able to stay uh, relatively hydrated. Of course, there are some sports, some uh, types of training that don't allow you uh, to take uh, fluids while you're uh, performing them. Uh, in that case, you might have uh, more of a requirement for rehydration after you've finished uh, uh, than in, in other sports. Uh, I would suggest that rehydration is possibly uh, the number one priority. Many people prioritize protein and carbohydrate. Uh, I would suggest that uh, you could uh, actually uh, include um, um, rehydration as the, as the number one goal after you have performed exercise. Uh, the reason really that, re uh, that rehydration is important, uh, it, it's very important to make, maintain hydration during uh, exercise, uh, is because uh, performance drops off very quickly with dehydration. Uh, if you become dehydrated, your mental uh, faculties become very easily confused uh, and your physical performance also drops off very quickly. So uh, I would forget protein and carbohydrate until you have uh, managed to uh, come up with a strategy to maintain uh, hydration uh, and increase uh, rehydration after you've uh, finished your, your, your physical activity. Now in terms of, of what you should drink, uh, again there is a small amount of variation on this. I'll give you a general recommendation. Um, you really need to drink a fluid that contains a certain amount of sugar and salt um, and the recommendation really is that about uh, for every 100 mils of water that you consume you really need to take in about 5 grams of carbohydrates of various forms uh, and you possibly need between uh, 40 and about 110 milligrams of salt and the reason you need the carbohydrate and the salt um, is, is to well the carbohydrate serves two functions really it's allowing the water to be absorbed more quickly and also it's supplying uh, some carbohydrate that will maintain your blood sugar but really the purpose of adding the carbohydrate and the salt to the water is to create a solution that gets absorbed more quickly and this allows you to rehydrate more quickly or maintain your hydration levels if you're drinking during your sport so if we look at the original um, the original sports drink Gatorade, it was very salty and the reason for this is that the salt is there to facilitate the absorption of the water. Uh, much as oral rehydration therapy um, is very, if you've ever uh, tasted anything from a, a packet that's been made uh, from, by a pharmaceutical company for oral rehydration, you'll find it's very salty. Um, and that's because the salt is required for a function. The more salt uh, you can put in up to the 110 uh, milligram limit, uh, the more you can tolerate, the better. Um, and even a little bit more than that uh, may actually be beneficial, but it does become unpalatable uh, at a certain level. So really that depends on uh, on your per personal preference and how dedicated you are uh, to, your, to your goals. Um, so that's really, I think, the most important um, uh, thing to consider uh, regarding nutrition and exercise, maintaining your hydration levels, and you need to do that with some kind of carbohydrates uh, and salt mixture uh, using uh, the best water supply really you have. Uh, whether that's tapped, uh, tap water or bottled water will depend on, on where you live and what uh, you have access to. Um, after you've maintained your hydration, what's the next most important thing? Um, well, really, uh, I agree with some uh, people's opinion that probably carbohydrate is more important than protein after you have finished your 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 workout. Um, but again, it depends on what sport uh, you are um, playing, uh, and it also depends on when you are next training. If you are, uh, for example, on the Tour de France and you have uh, 
you know that you're going to have exhaustive exercise every day uh, really your priority is to replenish your glycogen glycogen stores uh, protein synthesis uh, and muscle anabolism uh, are a secondary concern your primary concern is to restore resynthesize uh, your glycogen and therefore carbohydrates are more important than protein and I would prioritize uh, protein over carbohydrates um, if you are, uh, for example, a weightlifter, uh, you may be training a little bit uh, less frequently uh, and you are trying to gain muscle and gain strength, then you would need to prioritize protein over carbohydrates. So you need to have a think about what your physical activity entails as to whether you need to prioritize protein and carbohydrate. Of course, you can take both together um, and this is uh, what most people choose to do. But however, if you take protein with your carbohydrate, just be aware that you will slow the absorption of the carbohydrate and that might be one reason why you would choose to take carbohydrate first and then protein um, now the rules really after you've trained are different to the rules for nutrition uh, under normal circumstances N normally I would suggest that you want to take a protein source and a carbohydrate source that is slowly absorbed into the blood and this will allow the body to deal with the nutrients uh, at their own rate and this will allow metabolic regulation to occur uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that doesn't disturb homeostasis in other words the glycemic effects of the foods uh, don't disturb too much uh, the normal homeostatic regulation uh, regulatory mechanisms. After exercise, um, your muscles, uh, your liver are like a sponge. They require uh, nutrients uh, in larger amounts than they would under normal circumstances. And therefore, we can look towards refined foods. Um, Refined protein, uh, freeze-dried whey protein is available, it's very cheap uh, and it's, it's very useful uh, because it's very good at mixing with water and other liquids and therefore it's easy to, uh, to, to use after you have had a, a workout. So I would recommend your main protein source after a workout as whey protein. Um, in terms of which whey protein to buy, some are very expensive and some are cheap. Uh, I don't really see that your body knows the difference between an expensive and a cheap whey protein. We're told that uh, there are certain processes that whey protein can go through. Um, but generally, uh, I've never really noticed a difference between uh, the cheaper brands and the more expensive. I think you're really paying for the name, as with, um, as with many things. Uh, but it's caveat emptor, you really need to do your own research on the brand and what uh, you think it actually provides for you. Um, in terms of carbohydrate, uh, again, refined carbohydrates are beneficial after workout because they get more quickly into the system. They're more quickly absorbed, and that's what we want. Um, a mixture of uh, fructose and glucose is a good idea because fructose will preferentially resynthesize the glycogen uh, in the liver, and the glucose will help with uh, glycogen resynthesis uh, in the muscle. Uh, how much you consume will depend. Uh, I cannot give. A, I can't really give a, any definitive recommendation because how much you consume will be uh, dependent uh, on uh, how much exercise you've performed. I do find that uh, anecdotally uh, your body is very good at telling you uh, the carbohydrates uh, that you need after a, a workout. You tend to find that you get cravings for particular carbohydrates and I tend to go with how I feel in terms of how much I consume. If I have uh, uh, some post-workout nutrition and I still feel a craving for carbohydrates, I still feel I need to uh, take more, I, I tend gen generally listen to my body and I have uh, more carbohydrates. That two hour window after you've trained uh, is really something, uh, a, a period where you have to listen to your body uh, and you have to understand uh, what your body requires nutritionally. Uh, so you need to deviate uh, away a little bit from uh, the science and listen to yourself really. Uh, and that's really how I think you should, uh, should play this uh, post-workout nutrition. Um, if you obviously you're on the Tour de France, uh, you're probably not going to be able to eat enough carbohydrates uh, in the in the time window that you have after you've uh, you know finished your 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 cycle for the day because the exercise is so exhaustive. If you're going down the gym uh, and you've done maybe half an hour of light weights, uh, you'd obviously need much fewer uh, calories in, uh, from carbohydrates following following that type of workout. So you need to 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 gauge uh, the amount of carbohydrates you need based on what you've done. Uh, the amount of protein you need uh, is really based on uh, your body weight. Uh, the uh, recommendation, I would say, is about a gram of protein per pound uh, of lean body weight. So, uh, you know, we're looking at 150 to 200 grams of protein for, you know, a 200 pound uh, athlete, something in those kind of 
ballpark figures and how much you take after your workout well if you buy us a lot of the protein that you have during the day in that two hour window after you have trained uh, you probably won't go far wrong there's a there's a big increase in protein synthesis uh, in the period after you've uh, you, you've trained particularly if you've done something anabolic like lifting weights or sprinting um, so those those maybe maybe the next eight hours after you've trained you really want to probably uh, put most of your protein for the day uh, in that window and that means that if you've trained in the morning you'll be able to uh, consume protein throughout the day knowing uh, that you're uh, benefiting your system if you train in the evening that's a little bit more difficult and something that pe perhaps you need to consider um, or you know your training timing and, and how, how you're going to manage to, to take in enough protein uh, certainly if you trained in the evening uh, I'll try and get a lot of protein after you have um, uh, after you've trained and, and 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 might actually not turn to whey protein I'd maybe have whey protein initially uh, but if you take a, a solid protein that protein will then stay in your stomach for a long period of time while you're asleep uh, and that will trickle into your system over the over the course of the uh, of the uh, period when you're asleep if you take just whey protein that whey protein is going to get very quickly into your system but then you're not going to have any other amino acids uh, coming into the blood and that might increase the uh, catabolic effects that you will experience during sleep but this is very subjective because there are other hormones involved as well like growth hormone uh, and your testosterone levels so it's very difficult to actually make uh, definitive recommendations this is me um, thinking out loud really uh, in terms of uh, of, all, of all the, uh, the theories that have been uh, put around uh, the last thing that I'd consider in terms of post-workout nutrition uh, is glutamine. Uh, glutamine uh, is very, uh, seems to be very important uh, in times of stress and exercise, remember, is a time of stress. Um, now glutamine is required, uh, I'll give two examples of why glutamine is re uh, required in high amounts during periods of stress. Uh, the first uh, reason is that glutamine is used to produce glucose. So uh, when blood sugar levels drop, for example, during physical activity, uh, the gluconeogenic pathway is stimulated and amino acids are used to produce glucose to maintain blood glucose levels. And one of the amino acids that is required uh, for that pathway is glutamine. Uh, another is alanine, and they both come from skeletal muscle. Uh, so skeletal muscle is catabolized during exercise and after exercise in order to provide the liver with a, a, a carbon skeleton that can you it can use to create glucose and that glucose then goes back into the blood and it boosts your blood sugar levels to make uh, to maintain uh, your blood sugar levels because remember your brain uh, really only uses um, blood sugar as a, a source of fuel and if blood sugar levels drop uh, not only does physical uh, performance drop off quickly but also uh, your mental performance drops off very quickly as well so the body is very uh, determined, it's very uh, aggressive at maintaining its blood sugar levels and if that means it has to catabolize its skeletal muscle uh, then it will do it uh, and, and the, the one of the amino acids that it will catabolize uh, from uh, your uh, skeletal muscle is glutamine and glutamine is a very useful uh, amino acid in other ways as well uh, and one of the other ways uh, it's useful for the body uh, during times of stress is because it's a very good buffer. Uh, it carries two nitrogen groups which is unusual amino, uh, among amino acids. Most most amino acids have a single uh, uh, nitrogen group. Glutamine has two. It has a, its normal uh, nitrogen group as well as another nitrogen group uh, on its uh, on its uh, R group, its variable group. Uh, and this means that it's a very good carrier of nitrogen uh, and that nitrogen in the form of ammonia uh, can actually uh, join with acids uh, in, uh, the, in the metabolic pathways and that neutralizes them and it prevents uh, acidosis occurring so glutamine is used for that uh, reason as well uh, so during stress uh, glutamine uh, is released from skeletal muscle in large amounts um, and it's used for other purposes and that obviously is detrimental to muscle growth it causes a catabolic effect um, now that means that we if we supply oral glutamine we should be able to raise plasma levels and stop that uh, catabolic effect but that's not actually how it happens because oral glutamine appears to be uh, consumed largely by the intestinal cells intestinal cells have a very high uh, requirement for glutamine because of their metabolic activity uh, and therefore when we take oral glutamine uh, most of the glutamine uh, is um, 
uh, consumed by the intestinal cells before it actually gets in the plasma. And this has led many people to suggest that uh, glutamine is not effective uh, as an oral supplement. However, the way I see this is that uh, if you supply glutamine to the intestinal cells uh, through uh, oral glutamine, uh, this frees up the glutamine in the plasma for other reasons and therefore uh, the body doesn't need to break down as much of the glutamine uh, from skeletal muscle because uh, it has more access to that uh, uh, glutamine because less of it is being used by the intestines. So by feeding the intestines glutamine orally, we're actually freeing up some of the glutamine uh, in the plasma for other metabolic reason, uh, uh, the most metabolic purposes, and this means that less has to be broken down for uh, from the skeletal muscle. So oral glutamine may be effective as a as an anti-catabolic agent. Now, uh, whey protein does contain quite high amounts of glutamine. You can't see them on the label because uh, whey protein, uh, the way it's manufactured, most foods uh, will list glutamine and glutamate, which is a, a, a effectively an identical amino acid missing the second nitrogen group. Um, it will list both of them together as glutamic acid. So if you look at the back of your whey protein, you will probably see uh, the listing for glutamic acid, but you won't see any listing for glutamine. But glutamine uh, in whey protein contains around 5% glutamine so we can use that estimation uh, based on how much you take as to how much glutamine you're getting from your whey protein and this may be one of the benefits the anti-catabolic benefits of whey protein because it so has such a high uh, glutamine content um, glutamate and glutamine uh, in the body are interchangeable uh, there's a number of enzymes uh, that can uh, synthesize either glutamate or glutamine from one or the other um, if you take extra glutamine, how much do you need? Uh, again, this is a very difficult question to answer uh, and it might be quite a lot. Um, it, we're talking 10, 20, 30 grams. It's a lot of glutamine to be able to affect the catabolic uh, activity after uh, physical acti uh, after you've performed physical activity. Uh, and there is no real definitive answer if it is effective over the long term because glutamine has so many effects in the body. Uh, it's very difficult to actually know what the oral glutamine that you take is doing in the body. But the studies have come to some conclusions. You do need a lot of it if you take it orally because the intestines use so much of it. And because there is so much glutamine in the body, 50% of your amino acids in your plasma are glutamine. Because there is so much glutamine in the body, it makes up such a large amount of the amino acid pool small amounts don't seem to have much of an effect and therefore you need to take a lot uh, and that was a problem uh, maybe 10 15 years ago because glutamine was very expensive but now glutamine is relatively cheap with, you know as with creatine it's come down in price uh, and therefore it might be worth uh, looking at uh, uh, glutamine um, in a similar way uh, branch chain amino acids uh, are, are beneficial uh, after you have uh, performed uh, physical activity because uh, when you supply branch chain amino acids to the plasma it prevents the breakdown of branched chain amino acids in skeletal muscle. It may have an anti-catabolic effect, but again, whey protein is a very good source of branched chain amino acids. So, if you were uh, if you were just taking whey protein after your workout, uh, you'd be getting high amounts of glutamine and high amounts of branched chain amino acids, which really explains the the physiological benefits that have, have been shown uh, for whey protein. If you wanted to add some extra glutamine uh, into your post workout drink, I don't think you would do any harm. Uh, it would certainly do your intestines some good. Uh, the glutamine, uh, uh, even uh, even if we took the worst case scenario, that glutamine would be a benefit to your intestines. It would improve your intestinal health. It would decrease the leakiness of your gut uh, and it will improve your intestinal health and therefore uh, that will improve your health generally which means that you'll be able to recover from exercise more quickly uh, and it may have uh, effects beyond that that are actually uh, anti-catabolic and provide you with uh, a, a decreased recovery time for your next workout. So they're the four areas really I would uh, I would look at. Uh, do some research of your of your own. Uh, look at your post workout uh, uh, rehydration. Look at your protein levels, your carbohydrate levels, and look at the amount of glutamine you take. Uh, and just one more thing, uh, if you uh, if you are interested in rehydrating yourself after exercise, uh, you really need to take the water with carbohydrates and salt away from other foods. As soon as you put protein in your stomach with uh, th that drink, uh, you're going to 
slow the absorption uh, and it's really not going to have the effect uh, that it should. So timing is another thing that you have to consider. If rehydration is your, your primary goal, uh, you need to make sure that you just consume your rehydration drink, wait for it to be absorbed and then you consider uh, other things that you need. If protein is your um, primary goal, um, then you can take the protein straight after your workout. Uh, if carbohydrates are your uh, primary goal, then really you need to take those. So it's the timing of what you take uh, after you've performed your activity, and really that will depend on what physical activity you're performing and when you're next performing it. So there's lots of questions, and really I've, I've, I've probably asked more questions than I've answered, and that is because this is such a big topic, uh, and many people just go around in circles discussing it because uh, the science is very confusing, uh, and, and there are so many variables variables it's very difficult to pin down so I would suggest that you listen to your body listen to yourself listen to your own biochemistry and find out what works for yourself it's all about experimenting on yourself uh, to try and find uh, what works for you and if something works for you it works it doesn't matter if it doesn't work for anybody else on the planet once you find something that works for you that is a benefit to you and you need to to, to hold on to that and use it uh, and use it for good to make sure that your physical uh, performance improves so I hope that was helpful uh, if you've got any comments, please leave them uh, in the comments box below. And always, as always, I will try to get back to you as soon as possible.